Welcome back to PolePoliticking.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you go on Spotify, on Apple Music, Google Play, YouTube. Type in PolePoliticking. Check out some of our interviews since 2008. One, two, one, two, and place to be with Dwight Real Ridge. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm glad we finally got to link up because you tried to hit me before. Well, you hit me before, and then I had, like, some events lined up. And I didn't, I didn't want to do like an interview before. I didn't want to do some kind of like curse thing where I'm doing this interview and then I got these shows coming up. So I was like, all right, I'll wait. And then right after that, the Corona thing, hit, so <laughs> I know. it shut everything down. So it was like, this has been what, three, four months in the making now? Yeah, so how did the shows go for you though? Oh, the uh, shows went great. Shows went great. Um, well, the one show, the big show I had, it was scheduled for like March 9th or March 11th, something like that. And it got postponed because of COVID. That was right when they started shutting, you know, places down like New York was first. And then uh, LA just followed right after it. And they postponed it to May. And then sh this thing took off and they just canceled everything but the show I had before that did great I uh, got second place in the U.S. comedy contest uh, for my category the two years and under so I haven't really been on stand up that long but you know it's one of those things that if you good at it you'll excel pretty quick. So where you, where you from? Originally I was born in Frankfurt Germany a uh, military kid uh, moved but here. Right. Uh, my dad's in the army. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, moved here because uh, my older sister had to start school uh, at like a year and like almost two years old. Uh, moved to Dallas. I lived in Dallas until I was 18 and moved to Houston. I went to this school called Prairie View and m University. Yeah. HBC. Shout out to PV. Yes, yes. Uh, I went there. Didn't finish, but you know, I uh, majored in women. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> women and uh, everything else I wasn't supposed to be doing. So what got you into comedy? Really, uh, to be honest, it was, uh, I mean, I always been like, you know, like everybody was always like a class clown and you know, that person, I was never, like the big tough guy like I was never but I always like had a mouth so I always found myself uh getting beat up a lot you know what I'm saying growing up so I uh I had to learn how to be witty at a young age like you can beat me until I'm bleeding but I'm gonna hurt you emotionally you said that's gonna hurt way worse bro it's gonna hurt way worse so I never but I always was scared of like people like public speaking type stuff so I never comedy never crossed my mind until um I moved to LA in 2016 but my company moved me like my job uh I'm a cook and I was opening up restaurants or whatever and so I opened up this one in Santa Monica and um uh, at the time I was like I want to do writing I want to be a writer and so um I parted ways with my company or whatever. And here's a funny story. I'm gonna ask you a question, but here's a funny story. So when I first moved here, I only dealt with Santa Monica, Venice, like Beverly Hills, the Palisades, like those areas. I never left outside of that area for like months. <laughs> I was working, I was opening a restaurant. So I'm there 15 hours a day, six days a week. And so I thought LA was just Santa Monica and Venice and like Beverly Hills. That's what I, all I thought LA was. <laughs> And then when I left the company and I moved to Crenshaw and Slauson, uh, I was like, oh, this is LA. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is LA they talking about. Oh, okay. I, I see why. Uh, so I can't wear this? Oh, hey, this, this is how it is. Somebody gave me a rundown. They was like, all right, this is what you don't do. You don't wear this hat. You don't wear this hat. Oh, you from Houston? Oh, you got that Astros hat? Yeah, take that off. You don't want to wear that hat. All right. No, no hats. Fuck that. Don't wear no hats. You know but, um, yeah, so um, you know how people post stuff online, like come take my acting class on Instagram and stuff like that. So I hit one of them up, this guy named Dustin Felder. Uh, he actually passed last year, 
39 years old, mm-hmm. a great acting coach, uh, worked with a lot of stars. He was working on the Marlin show. That was his last project as an acting coach. Um, but I went to one of his classes or whatever, and I told a story and he laughed. He thought it was funny. He was like, all right, I'm going to do you this. He said, either go do stand up comedy before my next class, or I'm going to give you your money back, but don't ever come back to my class. And he said, I ain't never gave nobody their money back, but you need to go do stand up comedy. So I did it and I loved it. I did I did good. I ain't saying I killed, but I did good. And um, I just kept going up. I, I bombed like 33 straight times in a row, though. That was the that was the kicker. I I, I heard crickets. You you know how loud silence is in a room of people. It's it's loud. It's loud. And I, I bombed like over 30 times in a row to the point where I'm like, damn, no one to cry when I got the car. You remember? Keep going. Um. Because I'm, I'm like competitive, you feel me? Like, cause I see everybody else and I'm like, I know I'm better than you and you killing like, but I'm competitive like that. So I just kept going. I was like, all right, I got to get better at this. Cause I knew I had it. I just didn't know how to say it or how to, cause comedy is a, a art. Right. St- well, stand up comedy is an art. It's an art, just like any other art form. It's probably the hardest art form because uh, you can't really practice it at home. You right. feel me? You got to practice it in front of live people. And sh- man, I bombed. I bombed. I ate so much. Can, can you cuss on here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ate so much shit, bro. You have no idea. And I remember one day, uh, this other comedian from Houston, I was walking out and I damn near had like a tear running out of my eye. And I was like, Dog, why they ain't laughing at my jokes? And I swear to God, he looked at me and said, oh, those was jokes you was telling up there? (laughs) Damn. He was like, you have no structure, you have no pacing, you have no timing, you have nothing. He was like, you just up there basically talking to yourself. He was like, and so I just started um, just studying, studying comedians, just studying people, studying people. And I'm not talking about like Chappelle or Hart or nobody like that because those were people you, I didn't want to study people because you become, study like the greats because you begin to like mimic them. So I started studying like other comedians that I looked up to who hey, didn't who? have as big of names, you feel hey, me? Who? But just studied them and why they were good and stuff like that. Like who? Uh, one of my favorite comedians of all time, who's Arne J. Arnez J, yeah, uh, Arnez J is super funny. Uh, Ali Sadiq uh, from Houston, super funny. Then I started going back to like, I remember this comedian named Shucky Ducky. Quack, quack. Like, yeah, I remember like my parents used to like be listening to oh, him. You was, like, you was watching Comic View, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you like, started watching Comic View, huh? But but I remember like how they just had the audience like and he just man people like that just would say something and be like shaggy ducky quack quack and everybody would go crazy because I mean it's it's almost not matter it don't even matter what you say it's how you say it or just the timing that you said it you feel me so I just uh, anything you want it it you got to put in the work for it and sometimes. It's the thing that you run from the most that's actually your calling. Because like I said, I wasn't like a stand in front of everybody type person. I was always like a loner, always to myself. I still go places by myself all the time. But it was just that stage being in a room full of people. It's like a drug. Like this this quarantine, I'm talking about I'm in here in a cold bath, like <laughs> shaking and ice. It's, you don't understand. This is crazy to me. So I can understand if people like rappers and stuff going crazy, not doing those. It ain't even about the money. It's the the drug of the people. That's what it is. So what you what's your goals for your career? Uh, to be honest, I set out a goal last year when I first started. My last year was my first year in 2019. I said, I'm going to make $125,000 by the end of the year doing stand-up comedy. And I ain't going to lie to you, man. 
I made $125 exactly off of stand up comedy. Like legit, my first year I made a hundred like off of winning contest and somebody paid me like $40 to come do a show or whatever. And I was like, damn, I told myself I was gonna make 125,000, but I made $125. So maybe like, I, I, thought I, was, myself, I thought I was um, hearing that wrong. That's why I was like, listen, I'm like, I thought you said 125,000. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 no, I was short. I, I came with yeah. <laughs> you <was> real short. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thought but, I was hearing that shit wrong. I'm like, that ain't end up. Yeah, that was my goal. So I realized, take money out of the equation. You feel me? I, I realized money ain't, that was my goal when I first started was to make money. But now it's, it's honestly just to uh, be accepted by everybody. And I know that sound bad. You feel me? But something about who? Like, you know how some people like Michael Jackson, the world loves them. Like the world. You feel me? I want the world to know who I am. You feel me? Let's say who you, who's your your fan base like? Cause you know like some I mean some like black comics they got like more white fan base. Like what's your fan base? Black fan base? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I've never played a black club. Yeah, for real. Never. I never did, and it's easy not to in LA. You scared? Huh? It's not that. <laughs> no, it's, they kind of don't exist no more. Like. Yeah. I mean, they may be around somewhere. You got to find them. But when I started, like, you got to go, like, to the comedy store, the improv or the Laugh Factory or the Ice House or Flappers. Like, those are your big-name clubs where the bookers are. So it's kind of like when you – now, don't get me wrong. Those comedy clubs will have more black nights or urban nights, as they like to call them. So – the what I'm saying is like the black comedy clubs may be kind of going away, but they the the white clubs have their black nights mm. there. And once you do so many white rooms, you kind of tailor your uh your act, should I call it, for those rooms. And I had this black girl come up to me after a show one time, no lie, and she told me she was like, "You're funny." She was like, don't get me wrong, you're funny. She said, you're just not black funny. And that crushed it's me. It's a difference. It's a difference. <laughs> yeah, it, it crushed me because as a black man, <laughs> you don't want nobody to tell you you're not black funny. But she said, she was like, you're funny. She was like, you're like Chappelle. Now, she wasn't saying I'm like, like Chappelle. She was like, giving an example, like Chappelle funny, how black people didn't grasp Chappelle until after the Chappelle show. Yeah. Whereas he was more white funny starting off. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So she was like, you're like that. Like, I have like a sarcastic type of sense of humor. So how often do you write? Uh, Man, I write all day, every day. Like, ideas, like I can literally watch something like, uh, uh, the other day I was standing outside on the phone and uh, lit, this shit you not, this happened. I'm uh, looking at the corner and a guy in a wheelchair is like panicking. He's going fast, he's crossing the street, they didn't even look both ways, just panicking. German Shepherd is chasing him. <laughs> I'm literally like, have you, how many times have you ever seen a man running from a goddamn German Shepherd in a wheelchair? To the point where that, when the German Shepherd was like within reach, the man got up out the wheelchair and started running. Oh shit! I said, I said this man just turned to Forrest Gump. He just <laughs> broke the shackles off his legs, <laughs> like legit, man. But like stuff like that, you look at and you process, and now you just write your own. That's a bit. Now, of course, people change, things change, events change, stuff like that. But that's how I write my material. So, like, I I have a bit where I say. Um, I used to get in a lot of trouble growing up. My uh, my mom always threatened me with stuff like, if I don't behave, uh, she's gonna slap the black off of me. And I say, um, my oldest sister is albino. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, so I knew my mama wasn't Go making ahead. idle threats <laughs> when she was saying that. She was, you know, and that just straight come from like, 
Dog, can you imagine like being in a family picture and everybody is brown except your redhead <laughs> sister? Like, but no, nah, it's just how it is. It's just true stories. I got so many bits. Uh, some like I can't tell now because of everything that's going on in the media. So I literally write my set list at after I look at the audience. Literally, mm. I I. I have an idea of what bits I'm gonna do, but then when I see the audience, and it could be it could be 90% middle-aged white women, I immediately go start writing my set list because I'm like, this ain't gonna work, this ain't gonna work, this ain't gonna work. You feel me? Oh, I'm gonna throw these family. The crowd. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna so throw. Would you speak out and see? Look at the crowd first. I got you. Gotta look at the crowd first. You have. I actually I don't like sitting in green rooms. Mm -hmm. I don't. I sit in the audience. And I know, I don't know how that sound, but comedians even think it's weird too, because they'd be like, hey, you gonna chill in here with us? I'd be like, nah, I don't want y'all vibe. You feel me? I don't want y'all energy. I want the crowd energy. I sit in the crowd and like order food and drinks like a regular person type stuff. I'm gonna ask you, how did you end up getting your first couple uh, shows? Um, Really? I, uh, was at the comedy store. The comedy store is like the holy grail of comedy, really. You know what I'm saying? Like Sunset Strip, Richard Pryor, the legends. It, for the West Coast, at least. It's the holy grail. And so um, I did this thing. They had uh, like this thing called Set of the Night, where you have 100 comedians go up. And they pick whoever do their best three minutes. And I won it. Like, just starting off and so they were like come back tomorrow we'll put you on a show like literally legit like told me it was like three o'clock in the morning it was like oh can you be back tomorrow like six o'clock for a show yeah I can, of course i can you know what i'm saying call my job hey listen i'm sick i can't come in uh -huh. you know what I mean? and, that's just <laughs> and now i'm in in the uh you know the original room in the comedy store just like that was like my first month or two into stand-up comedy mm -hmm. you feel me so i did it was still at that point where you know how you talking and you like, like lose your breath like you your mouth move but ain't no word come out it, I, I did that like once and i'm pretty sure people could see that i was kind of nervous but I, it was a good set. It was still a good set. I ain't gonna say I smashed, but it was a good set. It would have been a smash if I had been more, uh, like, had more history in stand up. But now, give me a stage, I'll smash it. You feel what's me? Your, what's your interest outside of music? I mean, not music, comedy. We're talking comedy, my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm used to saying music all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Freaking, uh, I play Call of Duty here and there. You With your me? PS4 or Xbox? Yeah, of course PS4, man. I'm my man. Oh, throw, your, <laughs> throw your game tag out. Oh, here, here you go, guys. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Get your paper out and write this down. It's uh, Dwight Woolridge. All right, <laughs> and it's a backstory to that. Uh, I didn't know you were supposed to make up a name when I feel that name on there. <laughs> Do you know how many death threats I get on my social media accounts from white people? Yeah, you can't talk no shit on your uh on your I, shit. Bro, I'm talking about they be on there just talking cash money shit, all the racist slurs. I can't say nothing back because they got my name. It's, it's a Google. And one time I was on that shit, I never even liked going online because one time I, I was like, man, let me play 2K online. Someone yeah. made 2K, 2K online, all of a sudden this dude just starts saying, nigger. Nigger. Yeah, he, I guess he just gonna yeah. keep saying time stuff. So I just mute him. Let's put him on hell. So it's like, yeah. yeah, they all up on that shit. Dude, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes those be the best like lobbies because as soon as they start doing that, you'll be like, yes. <laughs> like you start playing with because if if you get angry that they're winning, but if you start playing into like playing with it, playing with it. It, you're pissing them off now. Like, dude, they do it all the time. Like, oh my God, it's so hot out here in LA. 
Like, oh, this sweltering 75 degree weather. I'm going to the beach. Where are you, Alabama? Like, uh, I say stuff like that. And they'd be like, oh, you're probably living off of government funds. I'd be like, like I probably am. <laughs> this is LA. <laughs> I was like, I, I noticed something weird anyway. Like, I was playing, I was watching Twitch. And, uh, you know, it's most of, like, a lot of the times it'd be like white, white people playing the gamer, playing NBA 2K. It's like, you know, the channels. So it got NBA 2K, and it's like mostly white kids on Twitch, but yeah. all their players be black. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> I'm like, why would you want to get a white player? I'm like, that's kind of weird to me. Because nobody's going to pick that team. Fucking, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> nah, but it's, uh, I like Call of Duty. I mean, I got a two-year-old, so that's my uh, biggest interest. Even, that's my biggest interest, period, is my son. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he uh stand up comedy comes second. You feel me? I just I balance, you know, go to work. I go to work early in the morning, get off, uh work out for like an hour, play, gotta have dad time, because I don't want him to be no gangbanger. Um, uh go to the comedy club. He's usually kind of up by the time I get back from the comedy club. Like tonight, I'm going to the comedy club, 10 o'clock. Uh, don't know if I should have said that because I don't know if they're supposed to be open right now, but <laughs> I will be, <laughs> I'm gonna be there. And uh, probably get back around 12 or 1, and he'll probably be up waiting for me watching like Rio or fucking uh, Madagascar or something like that. And uh, shit. Go back to work. I'll get like three hours of sleep, but it's a you grind. Must a, you must be a good cook, though. You said they bring you in to open up the, the restaurants and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all about leadership, really. You feel me? It's sometimes this is something I learned from Soldier Boy, and I hate to even say that sentence, but this is something Draco? I learned. Draco? This is something I learned from Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> to be successful. <laughs> To be successful is 90% hustle, 10% talent. That's Man. all it is. Why you learned that from Soldier Boy? I learned that from Soldier Boy. He said that one time like years ago. It's not, and you literally just watch his career. Everybody talks so much noise about Soldier Boy, like when he first came out. He's still yeah. around. And he's still around. It's because his hustle is impeccable. You feel? So you listen to, uh, who you you listen to hip hop? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know Some of favorite rappers. Greatest rapper of all time. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Drake. Oh, you fuck with Drake? Yeah, Drake. Drake. Uh, greatest rapper of all time, dead or alive. Uh, find somebody who who can beat him. I argue you down, hit for hit. Who else? Uh, you must right be now, young. huh? You must be young. Nah, it ain't that. It's who can hit for hit? Who can beat them? So you say if I can big, even he can beat them too. Uh, Jay Z too. Ah, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Ti. Ti is my other favorite rapper. No, nah, uh, you reminded me of T.I. in that movie when you said your, your beginning, because you remember T.I., uh, he was working at the restaurants. He was working at the uh, restaurants, and he came back to the uh, the, hood, the hood to help his mom and Mike Epps on that movie. I think it's called Chicken Shack. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what you reminded me of when you was talking about uh, you was a cook and stuff in the beginning. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. T.I. is my other favorite rapper, like Jeezy, Rick Ross. Uh, them, like, my favorite rappers, like, favorite rap group. I'd probably say like Outkast, UGK. You feel me? But I can't. I like Jay Z. I like Big. I like Pac. I like those people. But I tell I tell people like this. This is how you uh, determine greatness, right? With whether it's rap, singing, or stand up comedy. All right. If you ask anybody who's the greatest comedian of all time, most people are gonna say Richard Pryor or Dave Chappelle, right? Right. I say no Kevin Hart. Yeah, or Eddie Murphy. I say no Kevin Hart. Nah, hell A no. lot of people 
will say no. Now, they wasn't saying this eight, nine years ago when Kevin Hart first came out because Kevin Hart ruled stand up comedy then. But he but, did the same thing. He didn't evolve really. So, this is, this is how I say greatness. Like, okay, that's comedy, rap. People will say Pac, Big, Jay Z, Nas. You know, they'll say those people, K Dot, maybe, J. Cole. Um, recite me one Dave Chappelle joke. Oh, me? A lot of, yeah. Any, oh, I, got, I got one for you that, that one when he talking about the baby something crack. Recite it. Oh, I everybody <laughs> know. Everybody know that the topic, but recite it word for word. Now, Keep it's it. very few people who can do that. Very few. That's like if I say, recite me, uh, give me pop albums in order from beginning to end. Albums. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. Right? I can almost Big, do it. Biggs is easy because he only had one or two albums, right? So that's pretty easy. But, but I now I, I can say, do it though with the pop. I can do it. You, some people can. Some, yeah. Especially if you're from the West. Okay, you can. Now, if I say recite me a Kevin Hart bit, people can do that all day long. Whether you're talking about his uncle, his daddy, uh, uh, all the said with your chest. Oh my God! The funny is the one that he. Uh, the funniest one is the one I still use in my life is the one where he was talking about uh, his mama told him to go cuss that teacher out. Yeah, thank that you. Funny. Yeah. People can give you Kevin Hart bits all day long, just like if I say. If I put on a Drake instrumental, people sing that song, all white people, black people, Asian people, Mexican people, every race on this planet, like Michael Jackson, can recite Drake's songs word for word. You will skip over some Pac and Big words. You will skip over some Jay-Z words. But Drake, just like Kevin Hart, you're not skipping because you know that's greatness. You see what I'm saying? That's how you know the difference between like when people be like, oh yeah, Richard Pryor, my favorite comedian. Tell me a Richard Pryor joke. Oh, I can't do it, but he's not your favorite comedian because your favorite comedian is somebody that you can recite like that. Just like your favorite rapper is somebody you can recite. Yeah, I'm saying I was, uh, I don't know if you know about TK, TK Kirkland. TK Kirkland, yeah. That shit, he's funny. He's funny because that's like, it ain't even no jokes. He just be saying some real life shit on you and you. Him, I like him, and I thought uh, Patrice O'Neal kind of did the same thing. I wasn't a big Patrice, Patrice O'Neal fan. However, his, uh, the person under him, Bill Burr, mm-hmm. I, I'm a huge Burr fan. Mm-hmm. Burr is hilarious. Unpopular opinion right now, Louis C.K. Uh, I don't know if it's politically correct to say I like him, but his stand-up... I, I don't know him as a person. Whatever he does on his own time, but his stage, come on. You can put CK up against. I've you seen the reaction videos on YouTube where he does the uh the the nigger the nigger joke, the N-word joke, and they do it in front of black people, and you want to not like it, but it's so fucking funny that it's like, God damn, he said it and it's it's not what you say, it's how you say it sometimes. Because we know he's not saying it in a racist way. It's just the joke that he's using it in. Yeah, and I, then, gotta, I gotta keep it a book, man. I don't even hardly listen to no white comedians. Oh, man. <laughs> I think the only white comedian I probably listened to was like George Carlin. I probably never listened to the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, it's so many yeah. black com- I mean, first of all, I just feel like it's so many black comedians. Then I'll probably go to like Mexican. Then, yeah. But yeah. I'm saying, you know somebody else I found out that was real funny, and I didn't even know he was funny like that, but he was really funny. Fucking uh, Dick Gregory. Dude, you know what? I uh, I was he at a was comedy club. Funny. I didn't know he was funny like that. Dude, it, here's a, uh, somebody had gave me some advice. They was like, hey, Dwight, listen. Start off, start your set off with how you feel at that moment. Like, don't go into your bits immediately. This is some advice a, a veteran coming game. They're like, don't go into your bits immediately. Start like, let the crowd know who you are. So he was like, just say like, what's the first thing on your mind? I'm not the kind of person you should tell, say what's the first thing on your mind. You probably say like the third or fourth thing on my mind. So I tried that. And the thing was, I was watching some Dick Gregory <laughs> videos before I went on stage. 
And the first thing came to my head that I said in front of some black people was, what the fuck do Dick Gregory be talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Everybody mouth drop. (laughs) I was like, dog, he just be talking and it sounds so profound. But then when you listen to it, it'd be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, I know. (laughs) Hey, what the fuck I said? Y'all are <laughs> That's why I said, once I heard it stand, I was like, damn, that was him back in the day like that. I kind of yeah. feel like, like when you listen to Chappelle, I kind of hear that from, I hear that in Dick Gregory. So it's like, yeah. I think he got overlooked a little bit. I know they always kind of mention Bill Cosby, but yeah. Dick Gregory was doing that shit too. Yeah, Dick Gregory was the man. He just turned like politically activist and people forgot about it. You know, once you try to go straight and narrow, people will bury you. Then another thing too, like uh, even Dolomite, like with me, like far as hip hop, I feel like Dolomite don't even get the props that he need for hip hop because he was really kind of rhyming when he was doing his shit. Oh yeah, that, they, he was like the first rapper. Yeah. Rudy Ray Moore, yeah, he was the first rapper. Did you watch that movie with Eddie Murphy? Of course I watched that movie. That was a, it was a, it was a great performance by Eddie Murphy. It was a great, whoever wrote it, great storytelling, you know, all of uh, the above. Uh, I think a lot of people were kind of scratching their head at the end, like, so was he in the closet? Like, because that's what came out after was he was a closeted gay black man because he had to be. Because I was thinking, like, so was he banging the woman that was with him the whole time? Or, like, the woman did an interview or something like that. They were like, nah, he wasn't that kind of guy. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, I was saying, somebody else that's funny to me is, uh, and I like I like his jokes. I think he's I think he does real-life jokes, too, is uh, Cat Williams. Oh, yeah, Cat Williams, definitely top five. Top five. Yeah, that shit just... That day when he got on that uh, that Moni, I think her name Moni Love or whatever her name is. That oh, in her. Atlanta. He roasted her ass. Well, that shit was classic. <laughs> and then I, I loved it because I was like, that was shit was just on the spot. So I was like, he really funny because he was just, he was drilling her ass right on yeah. the spot like that. So you know he's funny. He's doing that. It's, it's funny because uh, somebody uh, asked me who would win in a roast battle between uh, Cat Williams and Kevin Hart, a roast. And I said, uh, I said, Kevin Hart will take it, hands down. Hands down, Kevin Hart will take it. Now, it'll be a good battle. <laughs> it's it's going to be a slugger. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Cat's going to lose, not like that. It's going to be a slugfest. People, the audience is gonna die laughing, but Kevin Hart's gonna win it, and here's why. At the end of the day, Kevin Hart got the arrogance. He has that arrogance. He has the, uh, and he has the money. You know, he has the money, the family, the fame, the movies, he got all of that. At the end, of, and Kevin Hart's one of the people that'll talk about himself. Both of them will talk about their selves to make jokes, but Kevin Hart's gonna kill him at the end by saying some smart shit like, all right, Kat, it's, it's time for me to go. I got to get on my yacht or something. I don't know what you got to do. Is there a 17 year old around that's going to choke you out pretty soon? Like he's <laughs> going to say something like that. And you know, it's Kevin Hart. He's, he's an ass. He seems like a funny asshole. Hmm. Whereas Cat Williams is like, Nigga, I will shoot it out. We can go to the boxing, the gym, like he did <laughs> Steve Harvey. We can just hopscotch. We can play basketball. Who's some of the female comics you like? Uh, <laughs> you would ask me that. I'm going to be honest. Some, some, some more. You were talking about comic view earlier, so I was a big fan of like Adele Gibbons, some more. Here's my. Here's I used to opinion. like Tiffany Haddish, but I feel like she kind of like she's not. She kind of doing the same jokes too a little bit. Name me one Tiffany Haddish joke. <laughs> what the fuck can we say? Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm saying she got the. Uh, I know her saying like we ready. Yeah. She was doing that, but I can't really. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I'm a. I am I do not really follow female. I I'll watch it, but I don't follow it like that. And here's my 
here's my beef or my gripe with it. Um, it's literally the same five topics. Men, relationships, periods, sex, dicks. If you have 15 women go on stage, you're going to hear about 15 women's same five topics. Whereas, I just, I just can't. I can't. I literally can't. Now, when you have like an Ali Wong, I don't know if you heard Yeah, that. I was going to say her. I will say she's pretty good. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, an Ali Wong or a, it's another... Uh, Actually, even though she got bad rap, to me, Monique was funny. Yeah, Mo Monique was very funny. Uh, some some more, I think her name is. Yeah. Some more, but she, like I said, she's that one of those same five topics. You know, it's just there's gonna be a female coming to come out that's gonna transcend genders one day. That's you're you're gonna be one of the guys. You feel what I'm saying? That's because I'm gonna be honest, it's hard for guys to talk about vagina relationship. I can't, I don't, I don't have none of that in my material. None of it. I can do an hour and I don't have nothing about vagina or a relationship. I don't have to, but I don't know. But like I said, I'm not bashing if that's, people only talk about what they know. You know what I'm saying? So if that's what you know, then talk about it. You can only tell your truth. And what's a good way to flip a G right now? And who watching this? <laughs> no, nah, uh, the best way to flip a G is put it in your savings account. Uh oh, because a a dollar, a penny saved is a penny earned. You know what I'm saying? Because you you can you can try to go do some wook, some wook little scam or something. I know plenty of people doing wook little scams right now. You might win, you might lose. You feel me? You can buy you a couple of scratchers with it. <laughs> you feel me? But put that shit up. Yeah, shit. You buy some scratchers, you can lose. Right now, right now in this economy, uh, go buy you some. Uh, try to get your real estate license or something. You feel me? Like, go to the South, Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, and go buy you some land for a G. You can damn near probably get damn near acre of land in the uh, deep <laughs> South. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, if you want to live down there, yeah, I don't know, it's, well, but that's the what best way to flip. What you think about, uh, you said there's a lot of lynchings popping up now. Uh, well, I'm from Texas, so that's uh, that's just another day, really. That's when when that when it happened in California a few times, and people was like, "Oh my God!" I was like, "Is that new? That's y'all ain't seen no crosses burning before." I'm, I've seen crosses burning. <laughs> like, that's that's real. You grew up with that shit? Yeah, I grew up in... Okay, so here's the thing. I'm so, from Mississippi, and I never... I mean, I'm from Mississippi, but I never had... I seen, like, Mississippi burning in a movie, but I never yeah. seen it in real life. Man, put it like this. You you know them old country teams, like, in them country towns that that's in your district in football and stuff that you got to play up against? Mm -hmm. And you go to their house... And you automatically know you ain't welcomed in their <laughs> house. Like when you step off that bus, I'm talking about, I remember playing one team, and they just throwing batteries, just throwing stuff at us on the side. Just, yeah. just as soon as they tackle us, just step on us, referee call us niggers. Like, yeah, like real life racism like that. You know what I'm saying? But shit, at the end of the day, you just gotta, you know, that's a part of life. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to accept it and you never should accept it. But at the same time, my mom always taught me the referee never sees the first lick. He always sees the second lick. So if he say something to you and you react to it, that referee ain't going to see what he said to you, but he's definitely going to see what you do to him. So I, I live my life like that. You feel me? Like, it's not what somebody say or do to me, it's how I react to it. And like I said, and that's where I got more, I was always more wittier than I was physical. You know what I'm saying? Somebody could, I used to, man, every day I got off the school bus, I had a bully. He whooped my ass every day, every <laughs> single day, literally. And 
bad. No, it, it, it's, it's funny now because he was only in my neighborhood because his grandparents, his grandparents lived in my neighborhood and, uh, and they, they were like well off, like nice, drove brand new Cadillacs. Like they were like well off. And he was only in my neighborhood that I found out because his mom was on drugs and his dad was in prison. His mom was on drugs and she lost custody of him. And so um, I remember one day he hit me like, and I was done. I was like, and this girl picked up my glasses and was like, here, he broke your glasses. And I said, you know, I was like, thank you. I was like, no matter how broken my glasses are, they'll never be as broken as his family. And I'll never forget it. He cried. And I knew at that point, <laughs> I knew at that point, he I won. No more. <laughs> Literally, that was like fifth grade. I saw him again. He uh moved away, like something happened. He moved away. I saw him again, like my senior year in high school. And he was like, all cool with me. And he was like, hey man, bro. He was like, dog, I never told you this, but that hurt me so bad. <laughs> he was like, man, I still think about that to this day. He was like, because he was, it was that real. Down the blood. <laughs> and that's when I realized words are more powerful than, than <laughs> sticks and stones may break my bones. But words will always hurt. What would you like to say to your fans and supporters? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. If I got any fans out there, uh, and I said anything that you didn't like in this interview, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, I'm trying to be more politically correct. Uh, I'm from Texas, if that's any constellation. Uh, I raised myself. Uh, nah, but to be honest with you, I'm just happy anybody check out anything I do. Uh, I'm always very like when people give me like compliments after shows or whatever, I don't even be knowing to take that. Like people like so many, especially white people, white people, you know how I feel when white people like walking with you to your car, <laughs> taking pictures like, oh, this is my daughter. Like, oh, you should meet her. Like, oh, this is take a picture of my family. Oh, can I shake your hand? Like, you don't know how I be like. Now, owners of like comedy clubs and comes, true story. I'm at a, uh, I'm eating a slice of pizza. It's like two o'clock in the morning after I'm my set. The owner of the comedy club, he's getting ready. He's getting chauffeured home. Like he's gonna hop in his Tahoe in the back. And he come up to me he, and he hit me on the back. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to bother you. I just want to tell you, great set. And we're watching. And he left out and he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to bother you. I was eating, I had a whole slice of pizza in my mouth at the time. And at that point I was like, dog, I think I'm going somewhere with this. Like when people know who you are by name, now that's like the best, worst feeling, I guess. Because at that point you can't say whatever you want no more. <laughs> you can't do whatever you want no more because you will get canceled. Yeah. You will get canceled. And that was something I had to learn uh early on early on like it's certain communities that you can't say nothing i had my run in with that community and someone pulled me to the side and said hey listen you some things you just can't say and it wasn't that i said anything bad it was the fact that i asked a question about something i didn't know and they were like it's if you would have pulled them to the side and asked them that question, that would have been different. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's the thing I don't like about, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like comedy should always be a free space. So sometimes I don't like that shit. But then at the same time, I can't say that because then like that shit, that shit still funny to me with Kramer. That shit funny as fuck with Kramer. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say, you like, he know he should have said that, but that shit is still funny though. That shit is funny, boy. He that just broke down that day, boy. He gave up. Yeah, yeah, no, and but that was the climate at the time because you know, you know, but like I said, Chris Rock can say cracker all day long. <laughs> you feel me? But if Kramer say nigga, it's a wrap for him. Yeah. He never saw the stage again. 
right. I want to say uh, thanks for coming through Paul. Take it with me. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Uh, if you ever want to have me on again, hey, you always got uh, my Zoom. You got my number or you got a way to get in contact with me. No matter if I become bigger than Kevin Hart, which I will by the end of this year, if not this year, maybe next year, depending on how this COVID looking. Hey, I'm always down for an interview. All right, maybe in touch. Maybe next time it'll be uh, in a in a G5 or something. You feel yeah. me? Hopefully next time you out here or something, I'll try to come see you. All right. I'll be out there pretty soon. What's your social media again? Uh, you can catch me on Instagram uh, at Dwight, D-W-I-G-H-T, Wilrich, W-I-L-R-I-D-G-E. That's uh, all one thing. Uh, Facebook, same thing. I, I I really didn't change. I didn't do anything. You can catch me on Call of Duty at the same thing too. It's, <laughs> everything's the same. It's, that's my password too. If you guys want to know how to.